What's up everybody, Coach Nick here. Um, here's another top video on breathing mechanics. We're going to build off the last one which was on the uh, compression and expansion model of breathing mechanics. And now I just wanna kind of break down what we're looking for when, I, when we look at the rib cage uh, when, when we take an inhale and an exhale. So as you can see, uh, this is a side view of our, our skeleton, just the rib cage and the pelvis, and the red is the thoracic diaphragm, the um, abdominal wall, and the pelvic floor diaphragm. So we have a side view, uh, looking at it from the front. So if, you know, this is someone's face would be here, yeah, this would be the back of their head here, hence back. And then this is if we cut you in half and we're looking down uh, from the top. So remember that inhale, things expand. And when we exhale, things compress. So what's actually going? So what's going on with the rib cage is, um, so if the sternum's here, and when we inhale, right, things should go out 360 degrees. Uh, so the action of the front part of the rib cage, this is called a pump handle. Okay, so if you think like a old school like pump coming from a well, you just would lift it up and then you would push it down and lift it up and push it down. It's like a pump handle. You use the sternum. Uh, so when we take a deep breath, we should see that pump handle action of the front part of the rib cage as this expands here on the inhale. With the side, so remember when we breathe, we want 360 degrees, right? So in the front, we have the pump handle action. On the sides, we want what's called the uh, bucket handle. So if you think of like a five gallon bucket, um, when you go to lift the handle off the side, these should come, you know, out. So we, we take this deep breath in and the ribs, I, I think I drew these wrong. They should be more of a downward slope. But when we take that deep breath in, right, the, the, these ha the bucket handle, the ribs should go out to the side laterally, right? So we take a deep breath in, like a bucket handle, then we exhale, they come down, in, and then we come down. So like you're lifting the side of a handle on a five gallon bucket. Now, we have to think how this is going to affect the rest of the body, right? So if you don't, let's say we take a deep breath and we have we take so on an inhale, we have really good expansion here on the right side, but this left side is more compression, right? So we need on an inhale, we need expansion on both sides. But if you only have expansion on one side, imagine what this compression might be doing to this side, the limbs of this side. If we're not getting full air here, this we need to then put um, our client or ourselves in a position where we would almost compress this side and get expansion in this side uh, to try and almost, I guess, even it out, right? So you have to think from a training standpoint, you watch yourself or your clients take a deep breath. Do they have good pump handle action? Do they have good bucket handle action? And then I forgot this other one. We need good posterior expansion, right? We need air going into the back. We need air going in 360 degrees, right? So now you can start to look at when people take a deep breath, do they have these three things? And if not, we then know from an exercise selection standpoint, we need to put them in positions that will elicit the things that we're looking for you know if we need that expansion on the inhale so if they're not getting expanded on like the bucket handle or the pump handle or even the posterior uh, expansion we need to put them in positions to get expansion now i want to give an example of how this may cause like issues in the shoulder so these guys here these nice looking rectangles those are the shoulder blades a common thing we see with people is they'll only get uh, expansion in the front part of the rib cage. You'll see like this common, like they'll take a deep breath and all you see is the front part of the rib cage. And uh, years ago, and I think still today, they call these this type of uh, breathing uh, chest breathers, right? 
everybody should be a chest breather because your lungs are in your chest, right? So you all want to be chest breathers, not belly breathers. The belly expanding is a byproduct of your chest expanding. But you can kind of, I think if I say, hey, you're a chest breather, we see this common movement in just the front part of the chest. So what actually may happen is we'll get a so on an inhale, we'll actually get compression in the rear part, the posterior part of the rib cage, but we'll get expansion here in the front. And what ends up happening is the, the shoulder blades, so here's the rib cage, okay? And then the shoulder blades sit on the rib cage like that. So if we're only going to get expansion this way, and not anything going into the back, we're getting more of a compression. So all of that movement's going to the front of the body. You can start to see some separation between the shoulder blade and the rib cage, okay? So if this is my rib cage and here's my shoulder blade, if I'm only breathing that way, I'm gonna slowly start to pull the rib cage away from the shoulder blade. So think of the back part of the rib cage as like the ground and the front part of the shoulder blade as like feet. If we're not getting the expansion in the back, we're gonna pull the ground away from the feet. So now you have a shoulder blade that's just hanging out here. This can like start to creep up, it can start to creep over. So you, we, we look at people with shoulder issues or shoulder pain or lack of range of motion in their shoulder, we need to make sure that they're getting good air in the rear part of their rib cage because the scapula can't move well, then the humerus can't move well, right? So here's the scap, here's the humerus. If this scap's floating away and coming up, this humerus is gonna be blocked in some of its ranges of motion. We're gonna see restrictions in those ranges of motion. So I hope this is getting your wheels turning like and some light bulbs are going off like, man, breathing mechanics are really important. But they're actually kind of easy though once we see this compression and expansion theory or model. Once we're able to see it, we can start putting in some movements that'll help get us into better positions to help facilitate better movement. And, you know, the, the effects are almost like, wow, like it's really that simple. And I've seen dramatic effects for like shoulder issues. If we can just get some better expansion in the posterior part of their rib cage, the shoulder issues and the range of motion in the shoulder has been profound. And then what we can do is we've created space. We can then strengthen the space. But that's for another video. Hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave a comment or shoot me a message. And if you found this beneficial, share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues. That would be much appreciated. Until next time, Coach Nick, out.